Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 8th grade concept of square roots, specifically how we could approximate square roots of irrational numbers and plot them on a number line, and we will do it in 5 minutes or less. So, we have some easy square roots that come out to whole numbers, like the square root of 16 is 4 and the square root of 81 is 9, but what happens when we are asked to find the square root of a number that doesn't quite work. So let's say we're looking for the square root of 13. How do we approximate that? Well, one of the easy ways to do that would be to make just a little table. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to find some numbers when they're squared can fall on either side of that. So if I'm thinking of Let's say I'm thinking of 3, and if I square 3, that's going to get me 9. So if I took the square root of 9, that goes back to 3, right? Because the square root kind of cancels out your squared. And then if I'm thinking of 4, then that squared is going to get me 16. And if I take the square root of 16, right, that gets me back to 4. And so my 13 is going to land right in between those. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the numbers that go uh, below and above this number. So I'm looking for the square root of 13. So it's going to land somewhere between 3 and 4. It's going to be a decimal. Now, where exactly between 3 and 4? Well, let's see. 13 is 4 above 9. And so 13 is only 3 below 16. So it's pretty close uh, to both of those. But you notice that it's a little bit closer to the 16. So it's going to be, we'll call that maybe a 3.6 or maybe a 3.7, simply because it's only 3 away from that 16, but it's 4 away from the 9. So if we wanted to graph this, right, we would do something like this. If that's... Uh, my 3, and that's my 4, right? Maybe there's your 3.5. We would probably graph it somewhere around there. Now, this is just an approximation. We don't need to know exactly uh, where it is. So now that we've done that, let's try a little bit larger number. So let's say we're looking at the square root of 60. Well, we can use that same strategy here of let's just find some numbers that land on either side of that 60. So we have to know our doubles obviously. So I'm thinking 7 times 7 makes 49, right? So the square root of 49 goes back to 7. And I'm thinking 8 times 8 makes 64. The square root of 64, right, goes back to 8. So that's where my 60 is going to fall. And as you can see, this 60 is actually going to land a little bit closer to the 8 than it does the 7. Right, so we have to do a little bit of mental math. You see it's 11 away from this 49. It's only 4 away from that 64. So I'm going to say it's that's almost twice, over twice, maybe 2.5 times bigger. So I'm going to say it's probably going to be a little bit closer to 7.8. If, if it were in the middle, like 7.5, these two numbers would be very close to each other, just like they were in the last example. So once again, if we wanted to visualize this right here, then we would say this is your 7, here's your 8. Remember, this is just an approximation, but it's probably going to be a little bit closer to like right here. Close to 8, not exactly 8, but really close to 8. Let's look at one final example. What if we get really big? Like let's say square root of... 108. Well, same strategy here. We're going to see that our uh, lower boundary is going to be 10 because 10 times 10 makes 100. All right, square root of 100 goes to that 10. And you're going to notice this 11 way overshoots it, right? That's going to go to 121. So our 108 is going to land pretty close to that 10 um, because it's only 8 away from the 100, but it's 13 away from that 121. So it's going to be less than 10.5, maybe call this a 10.3.